always surprised by the song choices here. Um, basically, um, nice to meet you again. Met you yesterday. I'm the chief marketing officer of NetBase, and um, we are the social listening platform of choice for some pretty awesome brands, for the Fortune One company, and also for some folks uh, that are attending DigiDay these weeks, like Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Visa, Coles, and Coca-Cola, just to mention a few. So if you run into them, they might know a few awesome things we've done together. Um, what I want to talk about today is really how, for 2016 and beyond, as marketeers, it's not about us. It's not about brands. And hence, that first slide, it's all going to be about the consumer. And in a bigger way than we've ever had it be that before, and in a way where we have to embrace that and have to find the right tool to really get personal. And basically, the problem we're having is that we, I mean, I've been working, I've worked for Kraft, I've worked for Johnson Johnson, for Intuit. We all grew up in marketing, learning to look at our brand universe. Who defines our, our brand? What defines our brand? And we basically learned to look at the world through the eyes of the brand. And when you do that, that's an exceptional narrow view of the consumer and the person they are. In fact, I've already declared I did millennial titled webinars and presentations this year. No more. No more will I call someone a millennial because I've met quite a few who fall under that category who are actually find that, you know, disrespectful or ingenious in some sort and definitely showing that a brand is not taking the time to figure out who they are and relate to them at a personal level. And what I'm going to talk about is how technology now allows you to look at the world through the eyes of the consumer and hence really unleashing the consumer in the wild. And there's so much more to them than what brand they drink, what brand they eat, what they use for gaming. It's all about the interest, what, what are they into, who do they relate to, what do they believe in. And once you do that, once you take this much broader view and you start at the very beginning of your marketing process with your strategy, your segmentation, what you'll see is that you're going to end up in another place. And the important thing is you'll end up in a place where you can grow your business while really creating a much stronger bond with your consumer going forward. Because we, I know that we've already done it with some of the brands I actually mentioned. And what I want to do with you today is to do this across Star Wars because we've betaed and trialed and we're now launching a product called Audience Marketing or Audience um, uh, 3D. We call it A3D in short. Let's just A3D. Um, and basically, I've run that through Star Wars. Well, who wouldn't? This is the prime time for a bit of Star Wars magic. In fact, through this laser, I have a, I have a lightsaber in my hand should anybody you know, not behave. Um, but basically, it's everywhere. You go into calls, it's full of Star Wars. You watch TV, CoverGirls has even launched Star Wars. I mean, you cannot expect where you will come across Star Wars this year, but you're coming across it. So basically, I've looked across more than half a million unique authors and defined the Star Wars, Star Wars audience. Who is the Star Wars audience? In English, so you'll see that for now and in the future from from us, of course, um, any other language is also doable. But I did it in English just for, for sake of time. And we're going to look at what these people are about, what they believe in, but not through the eye of the brand, really through the eye of the consumer and what matters to them. So let's take a look. I don't know who's bought their tickets yet for Star Wars. Not that many. You're so not going to get one before Christmas. <laughs> I'm going in on the 17th, so I'm really happy I'm taking my son's soccer team. Um, in fact, if you live close to the San Jose area, Cupertino, I might have a few spare ones. Um, so look me up. All right, let's take a look. So let's get closer to the Star Wars audience and really see how they might also, how the brands that serve Star Wars, and even Disney for that matter, could maybe have thought about a few things a little bit differently. Let's look at who they are in the wild versus the general pub. What defines them? What experiences might we uncover that are of interest to them? And also, something that often matters is, let's say, when you're a gaming brand, if you're a sports brand, in fact, look at Geico teaming up with other brands in the advertising increasingly. Who is relevant to your audience? Who should you avoid? That's really important as you strive to make that super personal connection with your brand. And the reality, it's, it's totally possible. We go through a three-step process. I'm not going to show all that process with you here. First, really defining segmentation and strategy, then through to content, what matters, and then literally ending up with a 
you know, a, li a, li a literal individual list of people that are relevant for you um, that you can find in social. And it's not creepy because if it is to anybody, they will tell you no. But to most, they will actually raise the hand and go, wow, you understood me. You knew something about me. I really appreciate you took the time. All right, let's take a look. So it starts with this. Use such an attitude it's so is something you all know from having grown up in marketing. It's something you might be doing every two years. It costs, costs a whole bunch of money, and it sets you know, maybe the five segments you're going to go after for the next five, and the personas you create, the definitions that inform all collateral. Well, you can now do this at the press of the button. So this is use such an attitude into a Star Wars origin at the touch of social. And you can see that there are also these little layers behind this kind of hon honeycomb view, and that's because it's drillable and completely dynamic. And basically, these are some of the areas that pop up when we look at what are the usages, what are the attitudes, what pops for this particular audience. So you got what they think is nice, what's awesome, what sucks, what's terrible, what they can't wait to, what they want. And who doesn't want to know? what a consumer want, because that's, of course, when you can be a really high relevance. Also, what's the worst ever thing? What do they hate? And so forth. So basically, you can go all the way through this down to the individual post and understand particularly what is the language you might have to learn really fast to use in your content marketing so you can increase your relevance, or what's that moment you can tap into. And for those of you who are maybe in great conversations with Google on moments, Moments is a really big deal for them going into 2016. This ties directly into the moments because you can look at it whenever you want, right now or what, however the amount of time you want to look at. So let's click into want and worst and see what happened when we went to the next layer. So what are the wants and worsts of Star Wars audiences? Well, pizza is a really big want. They really want pizza. I mean, we talked about food a bit earlier. Well. Sorry, Chipotle, but they really want pizza. Um, there's also, you know, tattooing going on, right? So I want a was tattoo, or I want one of the, uh, you know, one of the characters from the new Star Wars movie tattooed onto me. Or the two, some of you are probably wondering, what does that two thing mean? Well, that is talking about some of the entertainment world. I want to, and yes, this is true, I want to see Pitch Perfect 2. Now, I happen to like that, but this audience likes it too. Um, Hunger Games 2. You know, or me too, can we just go eat pizza? Um, and Christmas, I really look forward to Christmas and basically I want a pair of Adidas runner for Christmas. So suddenly what you're learning about an audience is what else is important to them in their lives. It just depends on how willing you are to learn that. And in terms of the worst, you know, the worst thing is to be alone with my parents in Manhattan is one of those individuals behind that. Um, the worst headache is literally that. Some of you definitely had it here because of the altitude difference. And I think the best giveaway would have been some aspirins um, and eye drops for all of us when we arrived here. But it's literally about having I have the worst headache today. So what could you do from a branded standpoint with someone if you know that about them and you know them in the moment? Or I'm sitting in the worst possible traffic in Boston right now and getting really agitated about it. So this is just an example of how now you can really dive into a super emotional layer that you such an attitude of someone, and you can do it at scale, and you can do it super fast. It's unlocking all sorts of super exciting opportunities where um, we're doing things in a new way with the brands we serve that we've never done before. I mean, for, we talked about this openly on stage before with Taco Bell, how we 4 x the reach. Um, of their breakfast launch, sorry, not of the breakfast launch, that one we can't talk about, of the, um, the app launch um, for ordering. And Coca-Cola, right, high engagement, there's just all sorts of really cool things. 7-Eleven has some really cool case studies. Once you know this, you can actually, you're not stuck anymore, you're actually unstuck. So let's go further and now look at, this is something that matters a lot as you plan media, and many brands still spend a lot of time on media, so want to know this. So what sort of TV shows, or what are, what are they talking about in terms of the media overall right now? Now, this is insane that the percent of the overall audience within the Star Wars audience that's talking about the Star Wars movie coming up, that's like insane to get 53% of any audience talking about one thing. It shows you how important it is. It shows you why all of those who bought up the license are expecting really strong things from it. And Definitely shows you why you won't get a ticket. All right, so Cup of Nations, big deal as well. NFL, we talked about that with 
um, just literally 2% of the go. The NFL is a really big deal as well for this audience. Yes, they are also into games, they are also into sci-fi, but here, those are the big pops that, that just, you know, before we drill deeper, the middle has been around since 2009. It's comedy. I mean, who would have known? And yes, I got to go dig into Spanish and Portuguese because football is really up there. And again, this is where we got to learn all the different languages of our audiences and cut way beyond English into whatever language they might be speaking in. Now then moving to the right, what foods are they into? This is just what pops in terms of food. And the chains pop here, right? KFC is at the very top. Hey, that links to the pizza thing we just saw. Um, Arby's really up there. Costco doing really well. Totally surprised. Um, Nutella. Come on. I mean, who would have thought? Who would have thought Nutella would be one of the top, most highly indexed food items or places for this audience? But it is. And Burger King. And by the way, Subways is not here at the top. So anyway, it just goes to show when you're thinking of partnerships, where you're going to express your brand, how you're going to express this. You know, how can you do that in the most engaging environment? Now, what are the, these unique indices when we look at the movies and the shows? Digging into that. So this is indexing what are those top items on the Star Wars audience. They love BB-8. BB-8 is the new droid. I mean, some of you grew up with R2, D2. Um, but BB-8 is a little droid, right? It doesn't run on the ground like R2-D2 was fairly big, if you're all re-watching all the new ones. I, I am. It's really fun. BB-8 could be in my hand. You see what you see behind it there is like a snooker ball, a billiard ball, pool ball, whatever it's called. Um, but it's really hot. Uh, it's a really hot item. The Star Wars movie, yes, absolutely. And then they're into Gotham. They're into Doctor Who. I think I look a bit Doctor Who today. Um, they're into Arrow. They love Halo. Um, there's just a number of things behind this where you really learn about the passions, the interests, where they meet, where they unite, and also where they don't. I'm only showing you, of course, the positives today. And then what about age? So this is where I think it's time, as marketeers, we put to rest, we RIP just targeting on demographics, gender and age, we're so beyond that. I mean, this is one of the things that technology has really unlocked, the ability to go way beyond demographics and age and not just do this mass cutting of people into buckets, which, by the way, of course, this is on age, right? Because where are they? When you look at the Star Wars enthusiasts across age, this is how they spread out. And, I mean, that... Sorry, I can't stand up here all the time. If you look down here... 45 to 54, that was when the first Star Wars movie came out. Those people were 7 to 16 years old. Um, there's longevity, there's generationalism, there's an acceptability of this brand because they've stayed current to a ton of different age groups. And it would be very short-serving to cut that just by one particular age for the sake of focus in that moment. And by the way, that also explains why some of those crazy licensing that's been going on might actually pay off. So I think um, what's really cool is how certain brands are achieving this. Disney is another good example of really transcending age and not letting go of an unseen opportunity because they're choosing to hone in on a couple of years under a certain headline. So with that, um, we're getting into psychographics. That's ultimately what looking at the consumer in the wild is. And boy, have I had to pay great attention to which pictures are used here so that they're not copyrighted or that I don't owe a million to Disney or something. That is why you're seeing really old background, Return of the Jedi here in the background from consumers who posted these pictures. Um, but the psychographics, I'm giving you a peekaboo, let's face it. Um, but some of the things that you now know about the Star Wars audience is that, hey, they might unite over a pizza, definitely more so than a subway. Um, Nutella is actually a really big deal. We could absolutely drill into finding out when during the day that takes place, where it takes place more so than in a place where it takes place less so. And it's not about age. It's not about gender, by the way, either. And importantly, they are, of course, united, ultimately, behind the brand and the biggest expression of that brand, which is the movie, and which is, in this case, BB-8 being a really big thing. And I think the question that raises is, of course, did they do the right thing in not asking George Lucas for advice? And maybe they did, because they're constantly renewing themselves. 
and staying clued into the new audience and who they got to win with going forward. And that's really exciting. And with that, I am nearly out of time. Um, I think, I actually don't understand this clock, it just changed. Um, <laughs> it's very hard, but now you are. <laughs> so I just want to thank those of our customers who are already testing this out, you know, Taco Bell and Coke in particular. Coke did, did awesome stuff with this for Share Coke that really paid off, and it's opening doors, not closing. Um, oh, you don't need that. I don't need thank that. you. But thank you so much for knowing. Right. That was great. Thanks.